Well, welcome to episode one of Climate Chronicles. Uh, we're going to talk today about carbon dioxide and greenhouse warming. We'll give a basic overview of CO2, and we'll explode. There are a couple of myths, things that you're being told that aren't quite so. Uh, much of the material here is derived from my book, Inconvenient Facts, the science that Al Gore doesn't want you to know. Um, just a quick update, we are actually just proved, approved today the sixth printing of Inconvenient Facts, and it's recently been number one bestseller last week and in a couple of categories on Amazon, which is a good thing. People are buying books, staying inside. This will be a coronavirus-free presentation, by the way. Uh, other big things happening, I'm creating a new website. It, that process will get underway next week. It'll allow us to sell uh, the highly coveted T-shirts, the I Love CO2 T-shirts, and you also could have the bumper sticker on the back of your gas-guzzling SUV, just like I do my I Love CO2 uh, bumper sticker. So th that is coming, probably available in the next week or two. Unfortunately, I've had all my conferences I had four large conferences canceled over the last several weeks, of course, due to COVID-19. And uh, But we're going to be doing uh, remote sessions for a couple of these, including Earth X, which is the largest Earth Day celebration. Although it was postponed, I'll be do we'll be doing a large uh, presentation, 30-minute presentation for them. So we'll be able to get that information out there. Uh, we'll start this out. I think it's important to understand what I believe. And what I believe is that, in terms of climate change and global warming, is that CO2 has been increasing. We'll take a look at that. Uh, it's mainly due to the burning of fossil fuels, and we'll dive into one of the biggest myths here in a few minutes uh, concerning CO2 and volcanoes. We're also in a warming trend. It's been warming in fits and starts for more than 300 years. CO2 is also, I, I believe it's a greenhouse gas. And I believe because of that, it contributes, the increase in CO2 contributes some warming to the atmosphere. But the big question and the central debate is how much is that percentage? Uh, I'll contend it's modest and greatly overwhelmed by the same primary drivers of temperature that have been operating since the dawn of time. Uh, the last leg, we're not going to dive into this today. It's another uh, climate chronic chronicle episode we'll go into, is that Earth and humanity are improving and improving significantly from the slight rise in temperature and the increase in CO2. If you go to the EPA website or other places, you'll find if you Google, or excuse me, here we are, this is Earth's atmosphere, you'll see the trace gases in yellow. Uh, most of the Earth's atmosphere is comprised of nitrogen and oxygen. We blow up that trace gas and again, that trace gas accounts for 1% of the Earth's atmosphere. And then we take it, the blue wedge of this pie chart uh, shows that CO2 comprises only four hundredths of a percent of Earth's atmosphere. A small number, but important nonetheless. Uh, we cannot survive without it. Uh, CO2 is the carbon dioxide has been demonized uh, as the demon molecule, where in fact uh, if you've listened and read my work, you'll know that I consider CO2 to be the miracle molecule. In 1958, carbon dioxide started being measured at the Mauna Loa Observatory. Uh, you can see this is a chart of increasing CO2 in the atmosphere. We're right now a little bit over 410 parts per million. Uh, we've increased about 130 parts per million uh, since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. I want you to note how smooth this, this line is. It oscillates up and down uh, due to seasonality. Uh, spring growth in the northern hemisphere sucks up a huge amount of CO2 and winter degradation. Uh, let's talk about the first climate myth. It's one I, people contact me a lot about this and they present it as, as a fact, is that Mount Pinatubo or Chacon or or uh, the big volcanoes, Mount St. Helens, put out more CO2 in one eruption than what man has produced in the entirety of, its, of humanity. The main 
It comes, a lot of this, it comes from Ian Plymer, who's a, an otherwise well-respected geologist from Australia, a well-known geologist. And this, this is attributed to him stating uh, that just one large volcano can put uh, more CO2 into the atmosphere over a few days than what all of humanity has done. Uh, well, let's see what the science, the facts, and the data say. Uh, and this is from the United States Geological Service. Volcanoes emit about 200 million tons of carbon dioxide annually. Well, that sounds like a lot, and it is, uh, but not when we compare it to uh, hum humans burning of fossil fuels. Uh, those burning of fossil fuels emit some 24 billion tons of carbon dioxide every year. So that's almost 100 times as much CO2 in the atmosphere annually. Uh, that we're putting in the atmosphere than what all volcanoes do. And you might go, well, that, because it does seem like there should be a lot of CO2 coming out of volcanoes. It seems counterintuitive. Again, volcanoes is 1% of what humanity is releasing. One way to look at this, here's, we looked at, go back to Mauna Loa, uh, the CO2 levels here from Mauna Loa, three of the largest volcanoes, uh, Angla, Chacon, Mount Pinatubo is the last one. When they went off, it didn't do a thing to carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. If we were having large volcanoes emitting so much CO2, it would show up uh, in this chart. There are other ways we can go and look at it. They can do uh, various measurements of the CO2 and isotope measurements uh, to determine actually its origins. And it's, uh, the increase in CO2 is, is from us and from burning of fossil fuels, and I'm okay with that. Uh, as again, I love CO2, it's doing great things. In a future episode of the Climate Chronicles, we'll dive into why and how CO2 is benefiting the Earth and humanity. We can also look here, too. Each one of these spikes in carbon dioxide represents uh, an interglacial warming period, and it only got up to about 280 or 300 parts per million. So our 400 million part per million of where we are right now is is... Uh, unusual and unprecedented over 400,000 years. But again, I, I'm, we're seeing great things. Uh, and we see, too, uh, my friend Andy over in the UK that's, that's listening in right now or watching this. We, he disagrees. We have a little bit of a disagreement on this. But uh, this is, this is an, a chart of the uh, greenhouse effect showing that uh, the solar radiation, about half of it's uh, reflected off of clouds and in, 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 in the atmosphere. About half of it reaches the earth and is irradiated uh, as infrared, and that's what uh, excites the carbon dioxide molecules and it's thought to warm the, give, provide the greenhouse effect. If we also, the next myth we looked at, uh, this is the EPA website showing greenhouse gas emissions. And you'll note that carbon dioxide here is 82% of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, if we go to the Wikipedia, uh, the greenhouse gases they list are carbon dioxide, uh, methane, nitrous oxide, ozone, things like that. And so you'll notice that, uh, and again, this is from National Geographic. So if you Google greenhouse gas, they describe what the greenhouse gases are. All of these uh, sources of information neglect the most powerful, largest source of greenhouse gas emissions, and that is water vapor. Uh, again, if you don't, if you look at ignore water vapor, this is what the chart would look at, like. That the carbon dioxide would be the dominant greenhouse gas. If we add water vapor, uh, we'll see that actually CO2 is a rather minor contributor to green any greenhouse warming. Uh, many sources quote uh, the water vapor is actually closer to 95 percent uh, but nonetheless 90 95 85 percent it, it's a it's the major contributor but yet it's it's ignored and why do they ignore it because if you ignore the role of water vapor uh, in the atmosphere for warming what you do is you overemphasize man's contribution to greenhouse warming so when I talk to uh, climate alarmists about this and tell them that. They say, well, yeah, but we should only be talking about man-made greenhouse gases. Well, uh, water vapor is a man-made greenhouse gas. Uh, if we, when, when we burn 
fossil fuels, you're actually creating almost twice as many water vapor uh, molecules as you are carbon dioxide. If we look in the most simplest form, it is methane. It's one carbon and four hydrogen atoms uh, make up a methane molecule. And so when we burn natural gas, which is methane, you create heat, two water vapor molecules, and one carbon dioxide molecule. So yes, water vapor is a man-made uh, contributor. Uh, the other big contrib uh, significant effect we have here that's mainly ignored by those that want to promote man-made catastrophic warming is the diminishing effect of carbon dioxide. So as we add and increase carbon dioxide levels, the warming effect of each molecule declines and declines significantly. It's a logarithmic effect declining. And this is the reason, another way to look at it would be through this chart showing that uh, 300 to 400 parts per million. Uh, we've already taken up some 90% of the possible warming from carbon dioxide at the levels we are right now. So doubling our current levels or even getting to 1,000 adds actually very little additional warming effect due to greenhouse. Uh, again, we looked at this chart, the 130 part per million increase here looks to be a lot when we look at it. We saw that earlier. It looks like a, just an out, a tremendous increase in carbon dioxide. But we'll put this into the longer term perspective, uh, looking back 140 million years. And we find that that same chart, if you see the red dot at the very top of the inset chart, when we put that down on the bottom right, down here, uh, we see that that 130 part per million increase is barely perceptible, barely makes a, a smidgen on the grass, graph. We'll go into this chart and additional history of CO2 through geologic time in the next installment of Climate Chronicles. It's fascinating. We'll also dive into the relationships between CO2 and temperature through time, and it's not quite as you've been told. We're going to wrap up this first episode of Climate Chronicles. We'll be exploring some other avenues to go through this as we go uh, and some better, better mechanisms and software to use. Your comments would be appreciated. And just as a teaser for the next Climate Chronicles, uh, this is 8,000 years of CO2 data in blue versus temperature in red. You can see temperature has been generally in decline for 8,000 years, uh, dating back to what was called the Holocene Optima, uh, all the while carbon dioxide increased. Now bear in mind too, these warming trends were called climate optima, and they were called that for good reason because both Earth and humanity benefit from warming temperatures and warming trends. So I'll remind you that Earth and humanity are thriving due to increasing CO2 and warming temperatures. And join us for the next installment of the Climate Chronicles.